Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, hard case crime and comics. It's my weekly wrap up. So this has been the final week of Horror Mayhem, the fantastic horror-themed reading event created by the Bookish Brothers. So naturally, I've read some horror this week, but I've also read a load of other stuff. And I felt like, I think I felt like I burned myself out on horror a bit. Last week, I only read horror, uh, and it felt like it got a bit too much. So this week, I've ended up reading a load of other stuff as well, particularly some crime stuff, uh, which I've really, really enjoyed. I've read a lot of stuff this week, partly because... I've read some comics, so I will go through what I've read in order um, and talk to you about each thing and, and talk to you about kind of how my reading went, uh, my reading week evolved. Um, I am now up to um, 69 books on my Read What You Own Challenge, where I'm reading 100 books I already own before buying the new ones. Um, so that's nice. So I'm nearly at the end now, and I'm, I'm fairly confident I will finish that in June. Um, I've got a bit of time off work in June, so I think I'll get a, a good amount of reading in. Um, and I'm really getting into comics at the moment as well, which which helps get through stuff more quickly. Um, so let's talk about what I read then. So for Horror Mayhem, for the classics week in Horror Mayhem, which was kind of week three, but it, it, it kind of trickled over into week four, uh, I read Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. So this is, as I think I said in my video last week, weirdly like a 70s like reissue of the book that changes a few things to to bring it up to date so it changes like the models of cars and things like that um i enjoyed this a lot but i did feel like the movies spoiled it for me a bit so i've seen um well, i've seen the original 50s movie i've seen the 70s movie and i've seen the i think it's the 90s version that abel ferrara made um and there's not really many surprises in the book apart from the ending is a bit different but it's it you know, it follows the same basic plot uh, and a lot of the situations and things like that are the same. So I didn't feel like um, I didn't feel like I was experiencing something new. I imagine if if I'd read this, you know, when it first came out in the 50s, it would have been a very, very different experience. So I still enjoyed it. It's really tense, got some good characters and things like that. Um, but I didn't I didn't love it quite as much as I expected to. Um, Another book I didn't love quite as much as I expected to was this one, which I read for Contemporary Week. Uh, so this is We Are Hurt Each uh, We Are Here to Hurt Each Other by Paula Diaz. So this is a collection of short stories. I'd heard really good things about it, and it was a, it was a weird experience reading it in that it feels like a book that is very very well written. Um, I really do think this is a well written book, and in particular, Paula Diaz has stories that are very different in terms of style and settings and things like that and all of them work so it feels like she is an accomplished writer in terms of being able to turn her hand to different kinds of things and some of the stories in here are you know really creepy and and disturbing as well but it was a book I didn't really feel like I gelled with it it didn't for some reason it just didn't quite work for me I could tell it was well written but I didn't particularly enjoy it um, so yeah, not a, not a fantastic experience for me. Um, after that then, I finished Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. So this had been the uh, book club pick for my book club this month, which I run with my patrons and channel members. Um, I really like this. This was really fun. And, and uh, kind of the opposite of We're Here to Hurt Each Other. I'm not convinced Road of Bones is that well written a book. Um, it's quite formulaic. Um, and it's yeah, it doesn't do anything particularly original. The characters are fairly two dimensional. You know, there's nothing and, and fairly stereotypical as well. But I had a great time with it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's just a really fun, fast paced uh, horror book. He does uh, Christopher Golden does like action scenes really well. There's some really good set pieces. It starts with a fantastic action set piece. And he just kind of continues with that. There's some reasonably interesting ideas. There's some creepy monsters. I just thought it was a really, really fun read. And I really like the central two characters as well. So enjoyed that a lot. Um, after that, um, another kind of lighter horror book. One I didn't enjoy quite as much. That was Island Red by Matt Serafini. So this is a... Um, this is a book about this this teenage boy who goes to stay. So his parents are divorced. He goes to stay with his dad who lives on this island. 
um, off the coast of Florida, I think. And it's spring break, so there's kind of spring break stuff going on. But there's also been like a meteorite or something like that that's crashed in the ocean nearby, and it's infected this shark. So there's this like crazed shark going around killing people. So it sounds like a really, really fun concept, but I just didn't get into it for some reason. And I found, it's one of those books where I just found my attention drifting as I was reading it. So I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as uh, as I expected to. I did think that the two central characters, the dad and the son, were, were really well done and I enjoyed reading them. But I didn't enjoy the kind of horror stuff, um, which is kind of really over the top and B-movie-ish. I didn't enjoy that as much as I was expecting to. So that was okay, but, but not fantastic. That kind of took me into um, the bank holiday weekend and, and in particular the bank holiday. So it was a nice sunny day here for the, the end of May bank holiday. So I think it was... Memorial Day or something like that in the, in the US as well. So you had a public holiday there too. Um, so I spent most of that that extra day off work sitting in the garden, chatting with my wife and, and reading. And, and I read a load of like comics and things like that, which I really, really enjoyed. So I read, um, I've hidden it under something else. I read uh, Phantom Pilot, which is a commando comic. Um, this was this was just fun, a fun, a fun read where basically there's a son in the se- fighting as a, as a fighter pilot in the Second World War, whose dad was a pilot in the First World War, and there's a kind of a bit of unfinished business and a bit of spookiness going on. So that, that was a fun read. Um, I then read a, um, a weird, <laughs> slightly weird, very British horror comic that I picked up um, like super cheap uh, digitally ages ago, called uh, so, so it was the scream and misty special from 2017 so scream and misty were two horror comics which i think both ran in kind of late 70s and 80s i might be wrong there scream was more of a kind of traditional horror comic um misty was like a horror comic aimed at female readers so kind of more kind of gothic romance style of horror um and this was as as is a tradition in the uk um, and I don't know if it is in the States as well. We do like specials, sometimes in the summer, sometimes and like annuals at Christmas time as well, where you get characters from, uh, you know, kind of long running stories who will just have like a little short story about them in, in a comic and you'll get an anthology comic that's got a few different characters in it. So that's what this Scream and Misty special was. Um, I think the problem for me was I didn't know the characters. So these were all established characters in short stories and I didn't know any of the characters or the situations, you know, the setups and things like that. So it was like a reasonably entertaining read, but I didn't I didn't love it. Um, after that, then I read uh, Men's Adventure Quarterly uh, issue eight, uh, the uh, heavy hitters edition, which features Hitmen. So I love these Men's Adventure Quarterly uh, magazines. I think they're fantastically well done. Uh, this one edited by Robert Dice and Bill Cunningham. Um, so reprinting, as I've said on the channel before, they, they reprint um, stories and articles and uh, like adverts and things like that from old men's adventure magazines from kind of the 50s and 60s and 70s. So this one, all about hitmen. So there was a couple of articles in there. So there was one about um, Bugsy Siegel um, and one about Al Capone, which was quite fun. And then some really good stories as well. So there was a great story about a female, uh, like female assassin, which I really, really enjoyed. That was the final story. Um, just packed with fun stuff and really um, one of the things I particularly enjoyed in this issue let me find some um, was some of the reprints of old vintage adverts um, some good articles like modern articles as well about um, like different paperback writers and, and artists and things like that I'm now struggling to find any of the adverts um, bear with me I'm terribly unprofessional here we go so this is a particularly good one so this is uh, you can send away and get various bits of fake facial hair to, to stick on uh, and make you look more manly. Um, so yes, very, 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 very peculiar, uh, some of these adverts. But I just love, I just think they've got a real kind of vintage charm. Um, so yeah, enjoyed that a lot. Um, after that then, more comics. So I read I read a few things on, including the, the Scream and Misty thing. I've been reading stuff on my Big Me Inknote Colour Plus. That's a bit of a preview of something i'll be talking about later on in this episode uh, so saga volume three 
Um, so the the first thing I read after the Scream and Misty annual was uh, Judge Dredd: The Complete Case Files, Volume Five. So this so Judge Dredd, long long running character uh, in a UK comic called Two Thousand AD, which I was a big fan of as a teenager. So I used to get Two Thousand AD every week. So it's like a sci-fi sci-fi comic. Judge Dredd, the most famous character from Two Thousand AD. So you know there've been a couple of movies based on uh, based on the character. Um, so a, a kind of vicious, brutal lawman in a terrible future city, Mega City one. So this, um, the, the, but what the, the, the people who currently have the rights to Judge Dredd Rebellion are reprinting all of the Judge Dredd stories in order, um, which is fantastic. And I'd picked up volume five cheap um, a while ago digitally. And so this had a number of short stories, which I hadn't read before, which were, so all of the stories in this were before I started reading 2000 AD. So from the kind of about 1980, 1981, I think. Um, so yeah, some, some short stories I hadn't read before, which were fun. Uh, one short story I had read before, uh, Judge Death Lives, the second Judge Death story, which was excellent. It's a really excellent story, fantastic artwork, contains what I believe to be the single greatest um, frame of comic art ever which I'll flash up on the screen for you um, so yeah really really enjoyed that and then it also had a really long Judge Dredd story called The Apocalypse War which is kind of one of the like foundational stories I guess of, of Judge Dredd which is where um, Mega City 1 the, the city that Judge Dredd lives in in, in the States goes um, to war with East Meg 1 which is a, um, a similar kind of mega city in the Soviet Union um, so it's about um, like a, a nuclear war between those two cities and it was just fantastic it was really really well done R like super super 80s in terms of it being about you know a war between america and the soviet union um, but i really enjoyed it enormously so it was a, a really enjoyable read um Right, after that then, read some uh, Hard Case Crime. So I was just in the mood for crime after reading, uh, after reading in particular that Men's Adventure Quarterly. Um, I was in the mood for some kind of pulpy crime stuff. So I read three Hard Case Crime novels uh, back to back. Um, so I read, uh, the, the first one has a very amusing title uh, and was an entertaining book. So the book is called uh, The Corpse War Pasties. Pasties being... Um, the, the things that uh, like strippers wear on their nipples to cover their nipples, um, in, ca in case you didn't know. Uh, so that was by an author called Johnny Pork Pie. Um, so Johnny Pork Pie is a, a performer in uh, like burlesque shows in, in New York and has written, I think, just this one novel. I think he may have written some other books about the burlesque scene, but he's just written this one novel, which Hardcase published, which came out a few years ago. And it was really fun. So it's about a... Um, a burlesque performer who who dies like on stage during her act. A part of her act is to drink some fake poison, but someone's replaced the poison with real poison, and she dies on stage. Um, and the main character, Johnny Porkpie, um, is like investigating it because the the cops think that he did it. So so he's trying to figure out who the actual murderer is. Um, so a fairly standard setup it wasn't a fantastic mystery but it was written with a lot of humor and like very very funny at times very silly at times and and you know interest it's always interesting reading reading a book set in a world you don't really know anything about and i know nothing about the burlesque scene at all so it was really interesting reading that so enjoyed that a lot um after that i read an older hard case crime novel so this is one that i think must have been written in the 50s but i don't think was ever published until hard case picked it up so this is a book called uh, honey in his mouth by lester dent so lester dent is a pulp writer from the kind of 30s 40s and 50s i think he died in the 50s who was best known for creating the character of doc savage who i've talked about on the channel before like one of the kind of pulp superheroes um so Honey in His Mouth was really fun. I really enjoyed this. So it's about this guy who's a bit of a con man um, who gets himself into a scrape and kind of some people help him out of that scrape. But it turns out that they're helping him out because they want to use him for a job. And the, the reason they want him for this job is because he bears an uncanny resemblance to someone else. And the plot kind of snowballs from there. And it was like really over the top. Like the, the actual... The places the plot goes to were, were very, very, very crazy. Uh, has a good action, had a bit of humour. It was just a really fun read. So, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, after that, the third High Christ Crime book I read, I didn't enjoy as much as the other two. Um, that was The Cutie by Dolly Westlake, which was originally published, I think, under the title The Mercenaries. So this was about a guy who's like a bit of an enforcer for the mob. Um, 
who gets who has to track down this this drug dealer who's been involved in a crime um and the mob like want want him protected basically um so it's got this guy kind of running around the city trying to trying to find this drug dealer um and it was okay but i felt the the opening was fantastic and the end was pretty good as well when everything kind of got wrapped up but the middle was just a bit muddy you know to be honest i lost my interest a bit in the middle but overall it was a, a reasonably entertaining read but as i say not quite as fun as the other ones uh after that then uh so as i just previewed on um on the big me i've been reading saga by uh by brian k vaughan and fiona staples so i've had a load of issues of this like like volumes collected volumes of this for ages that i got from a humble bundle um a while ago and I just never got around to reading them. And it's one of those comics that people absolutely rave about. And now that I've got into it, I can see why. So I've read the first two volumes, which is, I think, the first 12 issues. And it's just wonderful. So it's a kind of sci-fi fantasy type story um, where there's a, a war going on between these two groups. And a, a man, you know, a, a male guy, a male character, a male soldier from one of the groups and a woman from the other group... Um, meet and fall in love they're kind of different species um, and they have a, a baby and the book is told from the perspective of their daughter um, and it's a but it's a start with her birth and it's kind of her reflecting back on her parents relationship and things like that so it's that kind of trope of you know people from two sides of a war getting together is like kind of a cheesy one but the the book is just so well done um, fantastic artwork um the story is is wonderful. It's really moving at times. It's it's very funny at times. It's really exciting. There's loads of action. There's some great kind of sci-fi concepts. It's just a really really fun read. I'm enjoying it enormously, um, and really enjoying the experience of reading it on on this device as well. So it's kind of the the way these ink color screens present color is a little bit muted to to put it mildly, but it works, and it's just it's just been really fun reading it. So yeah, enjoying that a lot. Um, and then I'm also reading on that, so currently reading the first volume of the newer releases of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series by IDW. So, um, and I'm forgetting now, I think it's Kevin Eastman from the original duo who created TMNT, who's involved in this newer series, but it goes back to the origins of, of like Splinter and the Turtles. And um, it's just fun. It's just a fun, fun read. So I'm doing um, a buddy read uh, of that with one of my viewers, Adam, um, which has been very entertaining. So um, again, that was in a humble bundle. I've got, like, I think, 12, 12 volumes of it and I'm slowly working my way through volume one. We've, we've agreed to do like one volume a week. So yeah, enjoying that, uh, enjoying that a lot. Um, I haven't read the turtles for like years and years and years um but yeah enjoyed them when i was a teenager and, and enjoying them again now so it's been quite a fun kind of nostalgic week for me and i've really enjoyed getting back into comics again as i said i think i will continue with with reading comics through june uh, and hopefully get through that read what your own challenge in june right so um in terms of actual books i'm not reading anything at the moment so it's June the 1st now. I need to start something for June on the range. I think I'm either going to start one of the Black Horse Westerns that I've got or the Chisholms by Evan Hunter. So either one of those, not sure quite which one yet. Um, right, so in terms of channel stuff then, um, so in the last week you've had my review of the Kobo Libra Colour, which I've been reading on this week and, and really enjoying. Um, you've had my kind of an update video on my plan my attempt to give up using the kindle ecosystem um you've had my tbr for june where i talk about some of the westerns and things like that we're reading in june and you had my review of uh, flicker by theodore roshak a book that i have become absolutely obsessed with um in the week ahead then you've got a video i've done about um stephen king and how he has managed to be such a successful writer for such a long time so carrie came out 50 years ago and he's been like just consistently successful throughout that 50 years which is kind of mind-boggling i can't think of many writers who've achieved you know who've managed to achieve such longevity so um i've made a video about that um i will be doing my wrap-up for may um uh, i'm going to do a video uh, review of the book uh, Eat Them Alive by Pierce Nace which I talked about on the channel uh, in one of these wrap-ups recently which is the most bizarre unhinged book I've ever read 
Um, and I think I'm also going to do uh, a video about 10 classic books, which are actually fun to read. Um, so, yeah, look out for that in the week ahead as well. Right. I feel like I've talked for longer than normal this week, um, but there was a lot to get through. So I will leave it there. Do let me know in the comments if you've read any of the things I talked about, uh, particularly the comics. I'm, in, I'm really in a comics mood now. Um, and uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.